Hey everyone, Lizelle Crowley here at the Cool Tool Studio. Today I'm going to show you how to make a beautiful lentil bead. It's a two-sided pendant using two circles of clay with different textures on them. It's completely reversible and we're also going to use a jump ring and a bale to finish it off. Let's get started. So one thing I love about making a lentil is that you're making a um, necklace or a bracelet or whatever you're going to use it for that's two-sided so it can be re reusable. And you can use any texture to make a lentil. Uh, you can put anything on either side. But these jewelry artist elements are perfect because they give you nice focal um, areas for each side of the lentil. Um, and they have a huge variety. Here's some lovely um, fish and birds, some mandalas, some lovely florals, very delicate. These look southwest to me. And trees, who doesn't love trees? And there's many more. You can look on the Cool Tools website and you can find something for your taste. They just have an, an, an ama amazing array. And what I like to do first is determine the size I want to make my lentil. And because we're going to be drying on this um, drying mold, I'm going to first check with my circle template for a good size for this mold. And I, I would like either this size or this size. I could also go as small as this. But I tend to like, because of shrinkage, I tend to like to go larger. So once I've selected the circle I'm going to use, I'm going to lay it over the design I'd like to use. And for this particular um, piece, I want to use the bird on one side. So this size would work great with that bird. So this will be one side. And now I'm going to pick something for the other side. And I'm inclined to want to use one of these lovely mandalas. So. I'm going to place this over and I'm going to use this one. And please remember which circle you use as you cut out both sides. I have no, been known to forget and you want both circles to be exactly the same size. So let's get started cutting out our circles. The first thing I'm going to do is very generously lube my textures. And you want to lube all around where you're going to roll, not just in the area where you're going to roll. Because you don't know where your clay is going to end up and you don't want your clay to stick. And I like to very generously spray the cool slip, rub it in with my hands, and then just wipe away the excess with paper towel. You do want to wipe away the excess because if too much of the lube gets into your clay, it can change change the consistency of it a bit. And we're going to roll one circle at a time. And we're going to start by rolling the clay out smooth to four cards thick. Whenever you roll your clay, clay always roll all the way off the edge and keep rotating your clay so that you get a nice round sheet, not just a long narrow strip. Okay, once that is done, you take your texture, you lay your clay over it, and now we're going to roll down to two cards thick. And Easy 960 is nice and strong for this. It'll make a nice, strong, finished product. I'm going to roll with one firm, even pass. Look at how beautiful that is. I don't work on a tough card because I'm going to be laying it on the um, little doming mold. But I do want to lube this, so I'm going to very lightly spritz it. This will just make the clay release a lot easier once it's dry. Now I'm going to, and I did remember that I'm using this circle, I'm going to center that by eye. And cut it out with the clay pick. Clay pick cuts through metal clay like butter, like soft butter. And now I'm going to pick this up and 
And I'm going to first just gently lay it on the mold. And then I'm going to very gently compress around it. Now it's very important that you be gentle with this step because if you press too hard you run the risk of flattening out your texture. And I like to also pick it up and look at it from the side and that will um, help me determine where I need to press it down. Clay has a little bit of a memory so it takes a minute to do this step. But you do want to take the time to do it right because otherwise you won't have a good fit when you go to put your two pieces together. The other thing you want to be cognizant of is having it fairly centered on your dome so that the um, high point is right in the middle of your design. And I'm almost there. Just be patient with this step. It's a very important step. As you form the clay, it loses its memory if you're gentle with it but you're not compromising your texture. And you can see that it's pretty well conformed all the way around. I'm just fine tuning a little. Okay, now we'll do the other side. Uh, we're going to start, again, rolling it four cards thick. And I'm using the exact same clay I started with. This clay, um, Easy 960, also holds its moisture very well. And also by keeping it under the hydrator, it keeps it from drying out on me. Lay it over the bird. My two cards thick frame. One firm even pass. Looks like a parrot. And there we have our little bird. Again, get that centered on there using the same circle. That's very important. Always place your clay away before you do your shaping just so it doesn't dry out. Gently drape it over the mold and then the same thing. Just make sure you get it to conform all the way around. And there we go. We have the two pieces domed and ready to go in the dehydrator. The next step after they're dried will be to sand them and put them together. So here are my two sides of my lentil bead that have been dried. And they're very thoroughly dried. You want them dried on the inside and the outside. The next step is to sand them and the, the first part of the sanding process is to create a ledge so that when I put the two pieces together there's a nice flat surface for them to bond with. So I'm going to start by using my sanding tray and I like to uh, use a hockey puck to raise up my sanding pad so that it's closer to me and I'm not reaching down into the tray. So here's the inside of my lentil and you can see it's a, va a very sharp edge. So what I'm going to do is just rotate this on my sanding pad. And you want to um, be very gentle. You don't want to press super hard on it because even though Easy 960 is very strong post-firing, any metal clay is going to be fragile at this stage. And I'll just show you how this ledge is forming. I don't know if you can see, but there's a flat plane here now. I'm not worried about sanding the outer edge just yet. I just want to get that ledge for forming. And I've pre-sanded this one so they both have the ledge. The other thing to consider is orientation. If both sides have a specific orientation that is a top and a bottom, when you join your two pieces together you want to make sure they're oriented properly. This particular one is not an issue. This is the only side that has a clear top and bottom and the mandala side can be um, oriented anyway. So um, I don't really have to worry about how it's oriented. I'm going to very generously wet that edge. I'm not being skimpy with the water. And because the piece is nice and dry, even though it's getting kind of wet there, it's not going to compromise the uh, texture or the bead at all. And then I'm just going to put the two pieces together. 
and I want to make sure that it's lined up properly so that edge is to edge. And if there's a little bit of overlap on one side, that can be sanded away, but you want to get it as close to perfect as you can. And I'm just going to rotate this so you can see. And the final step is to just wet completely around the entire edge. And now this will go back in the dehydrator to dry. It'll only take about five, 10 minutes because it's just surface moisture. It's not all the way through the clay. So once this is dry, I'll sand the outer edge and then we'll drill holes and the bead will be ready to fire. So the lentil has been drying and it's, um, it's nice and sturdily put together. The last step before uh, firing is to sand around the edge and make it look seamless and then to drill it before I fire it. So I'm just going to take my sanding sponge and I prefer a sanding sponge over sandpaper because it's much easier to hold and it gives me a much gentler touch on the lentil bead. And when you're sanding anything that's round, you don't want to sand too long in one place. If you do, you run the risk of turning it from a circle into an ellipse. And notice how I'm rotating the pad because I'm wanting to round that lentil edge. I don't want a sharp edge. So I'm sanding very gently all the way around. And then I'm going to dust off the sanding dust. And you can see that it's got a nice rounded edge and it looks seamless, and that's the look you're going for. Next, we're going to drill. Now, when you drill a lentil, you want to think about how you want to hang it. Uh, first of all, you definitely want your orientation correct. So if you have a clear top and bottom, you want to make sure you drill taking that into consideration. Um, the other thing is you can drill from side to side, like from here to here, and that's good if you wanted to use beading wire and add beads to it. You can also drill top to bottom and use a head pin and make some decorative embellishments with beads or whatever. And you can also drill um, top to bottom. And that's if you want to add a jump ring or in the case of uh, today's project, we'll be adding a bale after it's fired. So I'm going to actually drill top to bottom. And I'm just going to look at this bird and determine how I want it oriented. And I think I want it going straight up and down. And I'm going to take this little hand drill. One of the things I love about this drill is that all the bits are stored in the back. This is fantastic because if you're like me, I lose things all the time. This way I know I'm never going to lose my drill bits. As long as I can find my drill, I'm going to have my drill bits. I'm going to pick a relatively small one to start. Now we did not poke a pilot hole in the piece. The reason for that is there was no way of knowing on both sides where that pilot hole should go until it was assembled and dried. So we do have to go with a thinner uh, drill bit to start. So I'm going to get that set up in my drill. And now I'm going to just drill from the top and I'm going to start on the side that has a clear orientation. And you want to come, um, I would say, about an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the bead. When you drill into dry clay, you're not punching through, you're drilling through. See how quickly that went through? Now from this side, I'm going to drill the other side. And again, you're not putting a lot of pressure. You want to drill through. And there you go. I'm all the way through. Now, if I'm going to use a fairly large jump ring, I'm going to need a larger hole. So I'll just go to a larger drill bit. This one is good. And this, this drill is just a little pin vise, so you just have to open it up and then tighten it. And this will go very quickly. It doesn't matter which side I go from uh, this, on, on this drill because I know where the hole is. So I'm just going to drill right into that already made hole. See how quickly that goes? And then I'll flip it around and enlarge this side. And there we go. It's all drilled and ready to fire. After it's fired, we'll attach a jump ring and a bale. So here's the finished lentil. Look at how beautiful these jewelry artist elements come out. It makes a lovely, lovely design. And the bale is just a nice finishing touch. Have fun making these at home.
Visit our learning center at cooltools.us for more cool jewelry making videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and be sure to sign up for our email list to be the first to hear about new videos, new products, and other cool stuff from Cool Tools.